Okay, amazing. Um, so, we're going to learn how to trick in the neural network today. Um, so, for the last two years, my job is doing machine learning. Um, and neural networks and like deep learning are kind of machine learning, which I have like zero professional experience with. Um, and as with topics where you like work with them but have no professional experience with them, you're like, I'm kind of interested in how this works, but like I don't know what's going on. Um, and it seemed kind of like magical and wizardy. Um, so step zero was like, I was like real confused about neural networks. I didn't know what was going on. I would go to my Google Photos and search for beaches and it would show me pictures of me on the beach. Um, and I would be like cars and it would show me pictures of cars but also of Turkish men fishing. Um, <laughs> And I would be like, fire hydrants? I didn't have fire hydrants down. Um, but then I would search for babies, and it would show me like selfies of me. <laughs> and I was like very confused about like what was going on. So I was like, and I, I thought that I used neural networks to do the search. And these are all like untagged images, right? I would just like show me a picture of a car, and it'd be like, sweet, here's some Turkish men plus cars. Um, <laughs> so um, the next thing that happened um, is instead of doing a normal thing, like reading a book, um, at some point, someone handed me this paper, like literally with their hands, um, at a bar. Um, and they were like, hey, here are three papers that I think you would enjoy. Um, so this is one of them. It was called Explaining and Harnessing Adversarial Examples. And I was like, OK. Um, I don't know anything about neural networks, but I guess I'll read this paper, because um, you told me to. Um, so I did. Um, one of the things I learned is that neural networks are, in fact, math, um, and which we're going to talk a little about, about what that math is. Um, I have a math degree, um, which made me slightly more confident that I could <laughs> maybe do some of this. Um, so, what the paper said was it was like, look, um, neural networks sometimes work really well, and they'll be like, you have a giant panda. Um, and then what it did was it was like, sometimes you can make a picture which looks just like a giant panda, but the neural network thinks is a vulture, um, <laughs> with like 99% certainty. And it kind of outlined how to do this, and I'm going to outline how to do this for you today. Um, so my question was, like, could I actually do this myself, right? Because I was like, the Googlers could do it on their Google <laughs> computers. <laughs> but could I do it on my normal computer? <laughs> and I don't even know, like, what a GPU is. Um, I think I have one. I still don't know. Anyway, um, so the answer to this question was yes. Um, I could do it. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how that went. So a neural network, um, I was very confused about what it was. Um, but it's a function, um, and it's a function, so this is a picture of a dog, um, and you can see that um, the neural network has identified this as a Pembroke Welsh Corgi with probability 43%. Um, so it is something which takes dogs and gives you um, labels, like, and a probability. Um, and in fact, this is too small for you to read, but it's okay, um, is you take a dog and it gives you lots of probabilities. So it's like, I think it's a dog with probability, this kind of dog with probability 43%. I think it's a tennis ball with probability 0.24%. Um, and there are all these other things in between. Um, all of these are dogs except for tennis ball. Anyway, <laughs> but like the probability that it's a dog is like quite, quite high, right? Um, so I was actually very impressed with this. Um, the first, the top one is apparently wrong because that kind of dog apparently has pointy ears. Uh, anyway, I don't know. The computer is better at um, recognizing images than me. Um, and the input, of course, is not actually, I mean, an image is not really a thing, right? Um, but it's like an array of like RGB values. Um, so you put in some numbers, and then it out comes like dog slash very unlikely tennis ball. Um, <laughs> so um, the next thing I did was actually, so the step like 1.5 was someone was like, hey, do you want to write an article about a thing? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to write an article about this. Um, even though I didn't know if I could do it yet. But I was like, I'll do it. Um, so I, then I spent like a bunch of hours setting up some neural network software on my computer, this one, and being like kind of confused about what to do. Um, there were many, there was many confusions here. Um, and then the next thing I needed to do was I needed a neural network. Um, they take like apparently one bajillion hours to train and one bajillion GPUs. I don't know. Um, I just downloaded one. <laughs> it was a lot easier. So what I did was I searched for Google Net, which was the neural network from the paper, um, and then I click like download. Um, <laughs> it was 50 megabytes. Um, that was really easy. It took like 25 seconds. I have a fast internet connection. This was the bomb, right? Um, so, um, and then I was like, sweet, I have it on my computer. Can I like predict things with it? And I was, so then I just started like downloading images from the internet and seeing like what the neural network thought it was, um, which was really fun, right? I took a picture of a sword, and I was like, I think that's a letter opener slash paper knife. And I was like, reasonable. <laughs> like, I buy it, right? And it was like, I was like, here's a cat. And it's like, that's an Egyptian cat. And I was like, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> right? Like, 
uh, um, and then I showed it a trash can, and it was like, that's a trash can, and I was like, you're good. Um, and then I showed it a, a picture of the queen. <laughs> and it was like, that's a shower cap. Um, and here we learn an important thing about neural networks and about machine learning in general, which is that when you have a classifier, it's only as good as like the labels you give it. Um, so this neural network is not aware of people as a concept. <laughs> so it was just like, the queen is a shower cap, which fine, right? Um, why not? Um, cool. So now we're like prepared, we can make predictions, we have the neural network, I send up the so software, I use like Docker, um, I was like, I'm a wizard. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then, but I also needed to go through this step intermediate where I was like really confused about neural networks and like what it is, right? And I kind of read the paper and I was like, this made sense when I read it, but now I'm actually, when I'm actually trying to implement it, I have like a significantly higher degree of confusion. Um, so we need to talk about some math for a second and like what I was confused about. Um, so, um, <laughs> this is a graph where you have, imagine you have some images, and for each image, it's like, there's this amount, of like how much is it like a panda, right? Like the probability that the neural network thinks it's panda, which goes between zero and one everywhere. Um, so for our panda, that was like 100%, and then for the dog, that was prob presumably like something like 0%, right? Um, and so we have our image on this curve somewhere, right? And our image is very likely to be a panda, according to um, the neural network. But then um, what we want to do is we want to move it down, right? towards like less panda. <laughs> um, and um, so I, I mentioned about, so and we want to figure out like which direction to take it, right? Because there are a lot of different directions you could take your image. So we want to like add another like little image to it, like almost im imperceptibly to make it less panda-like. Um, and so uh, what, the way you do this, um, the, the direction you take is you take the derivative. And I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Because I took calculus like at least like three times. Um, <laughs> Like, I took so many calculus classes. It's the derivative, I get it, it makes sense. Um, if you didn't take like four calculus classes, it's okay. Um, that's the direction, I promise. Um, and it turns out that taking the derivative of a neural network um, is what people mean when they say backpropagation, um, which I didn't know what that word meant until someone was like, Julia, it's like the chain rule, um, except for, like, it's just like an implementation of the chain rule, it's how you take derivatives with neural networks. Um, and it's actually like, I'm not gonna explain it because 10 minutes, um, but it's like super simple. Um, and in, in particular, it's a really basic operation. So I was like, how do I take the derivative? This is so hard and complicated. And then I was like, oh, this is literally the most basic neural network operation. I just need to find out like, um, like the method name. Like I don't need to do anything fancy because it's going to be like built into my neural networks package. And it was. Um, so I wanted to do this. I started with something simpler than a panda at first. I was like, here's a black screen. And I was like, what do you think that is? And it was like, well, it's velvet. Um, probability 27%, or like paper towel, probability 4%. And I was like, okay, let's make it more like a paper towel. Can we do that? And make it look the same? And we could. Um, so what I did was I took the derivative, so I was like, how much is like a paper towel? And then let's take the derivative, so we can make it more like a paper towel. Um, that was what the derivative look, looks like. I don't know what that means at all. Um, there are many unanswered questions in this talk. Um, <laughs> And then what I did was I took like that, kind, of, kind of like that direction and I moved it in that direction. Um, and you can see the probability for paper towel used to be 4% and now it's 14%. And 14% is pretty good, um, but it's not like 100%, which is what I wanted. Um, so what I did was instead of taking like one big step, I instead took lots of little steps. Um, so you can see I have this graph here where we start where paper towel starts at like zero um, and then I take all these little steps and then it goes all the way up to 100%. Um, and that leaves us with, this is a paper towel, with probability basically 100%. Um, and the really cool thing about this um, is if you kind of like blow up the pixels a little bit, you see all these like little swirls in the pixels. And I think that's because there are swirls in a paper towel, but I don't really know. That's like kind of interesting, right? Um, I think like a neural networks expert would be able to explain exactly what's going on, but that's not me, so there's no problem. <laughs> Um, okay, so then we did a little bit more, um, I think, yeah, we did a little bit more, and then I did a, a panda to a vulture. Um, from a panda to a vulture, I guess that was more different, um, so 10 steps was not enough, so I did 100 steps, 100 little tiny steps, and it took like a long time on my computer, it took maybe like 8 minutes or 10 minutes, because um, I don't know, I don't have a GPU or like a Google, um, <laughs> but, but it only took 10 minutes, it was fine. Um, so I started out with 0% panda, um, and then the panda curve goes all the way up to 1, 
uh, or no, sorry, the panda curve goes from one to zero, and the vulture curve goes from zero to one. But then there are these other weird things in the middle where it's like gibbon, or it's like ring-tailed lemur. Um, it also goes through ostrich. Um, and, and actually, like the really fascinating thing about this was I went to a conference about machine learning, um, and I asked someone who like works at Google and is a like machine learning expert about this. And I was like, yeah, so like I went from panda to vulture, and I went through all these like other things. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, like the panda ostrich space. And I'm like, what do you mean the panda ostrich space? <laughs> and I, I just like found it really fascinating that like people who do machine learning professionally are like so familiar with like this data set and this like these like networks and how the images like and like what the neural network thinks that they mean that they know that pandas and ostriches are like considered similar and like maybe that's an obvious fact to them but like certainly not to me anyway um, <laughs> there are like many research questions at least for me here um, so like we totally got our result and we were like oh now it's a vulture. Um, and I felt better, um, even though I've still never trained a neural network. <laughs> um, so there's like some more stuff you could do, right? You could go read this paper. It's like six pages. It's quite readable um, and very, very interesting. You could like play with a neural network. I have like all this code on, in like Docker. You can download it and run it. Um, there are like actual books that you can read if you're like a more normal person, unlike me, uh, <laughs> and like want to learn in a more normal order. Um, yeah, um, and the other thing that I, I made me happy about this is uh, the people who gave this to me. Uh, were part of the, run the papers we love meet up in Montreal. Um, and they kind of like really taught me that like, I still don't read papers almost ever. Like I never read papers before. Um, and then actually Maggie, who's in the audience here, at some point gave me a paper. She was like, Julia, this paper is great. And I read it and I was like, I love this paper. And then they emailed me and they were like, do you want to give a talk about a paper you love? I'm like, there's literally only one paper I've read in the last two years. And Maggie gave it to me last week. <laughs> Um, and then I gave a talk about it, and now like I occasionally read papers when people hand them to me in person. Um, and it's like really wonderful, and I've read like four or five papers, and I did love them. So that's cool. Um, yeah, that's it. All the, there's a, more stuff about this talk at this URL. <laughs>